I've been saying that AI is in a bubble now for a while, but I don't think that hallucinations are the industry's biggest issue. The bigger problem is that all of the big players in this space, OpenAI, Microsoft, Meta, Anthropic, and Google, they're all trying to reach profitability, and I don't see a way that they get there. So I'm gonna put my business hat on for this video. Buckle up. The numbers don't lie. These companies are hemorrhaging cash on computing costs, and eventually they are going to need to raise prices. But the problem is, I don't think they can. And as an educator, I'm always looking for metaphors to help my learners connect concepts to something they're familiar with. And the other week, I hit on one that I really like. This space is starting to look like the airline industry. And this is because AI models are a commodity. Because when we're choosing a model today, the financial calculus is remarkably similar to booking a flight. Sure, I have preferences. Claude is the best coder, GPT-5 tends to be a slightly better writer, and Gemini, Gemini exists. But the question I've been turning over in my mind is, what if the prices were significantly different? Now for flights, I'll pay a bit more to fly on Delta because I generally get a better experience. But there is a ceiling to that loyalty because the real reason for me flying is to get to my destination. And if Delta's prices spike too high, I'm flying American Airlines, or maybe I'll just drive instead. And AI models are in a similar situation. Yes, I prefer Claude for coding work. Suppose I'm on the $20 a month plan, which is the same as the ChatGPT Pro plan. If Anthropic increases the price to $25 a month, Will I still pay it? Probably. Would I pay 35 or 50? Probably not. I'd switch to whatever model offers comparable quality at a better price point. And I think that the moat here is much narrower than these companies want to admit. And this leads to three questions that I haven't heard anybody answer. The commodity situation creates a standoff that should be concerning to anybody in this space. I keep coming back to these questions. The first, who raises prices first? This is going to turn into a game of chicken. Whoever moves first risks an immediate exodus to competitors who hold their prices steady. Look back at what happened to Netflix in 2011. They raised prices, users fled to the alternatives, and the company lost 800,000 subscribers in a single quarter, and the stock price dropped 77%. In today's number must go up corporate environment, this should be keeping executives awake at night. And in particular, OpenAI should be terrified by this because companies like Google, Meta, and Microsoft, they have profits that they can plow into continued losses. OpenAI will have to continue using debt and equity financing to keep burning cash at their current pace. So what is the actual premium for the best model? That's the second question. The market hasn't established this yet, because we're still in the land grabbing phase. Now, there are a lot of variables to consider, but my hypothesis is that the premium will be small, maybe 10 to 20% for a demonstrably superior performance on specific tasks. Beyond that, I don't see businesses or especially consumers buying into price hikes. And then the third question is, at what price point does self-hosting become viable? This is the elephant in the room. Open source models are improving rapidly. Llama, Mistral, DeepSeek, and others, they're closing the gap with the frontier models in months, not years. And when, not if, the frontier models increase their costs to reflect reality, spinning up your own infrastructure starts to make economic sense for any organization or consumer that has high volume. And all of these pricing problems don't even touch the massive energy requirements that we're going to need to power these data centers that everybody wants to toss up. Sam Altman's plans will require the equivalent of 17 nuclear power plants to be built before 2030. That is enough power to service 13 million homes and is the equivalent of nine Hoover dams. But then there's some people out there hyping this up they'll point to the fiber optic networks that provided value long after the dot-com crash. Today's massive investments will create lasting value even if these individual companies fail. But it's not the same. It's not even close. 
The fiber that we laid in the late 90s can still carry data in 2025. It's a physical infrastructure with decades of useful life. But these graphics card clusters, they're obsolete in 18 months. New chips deliver better performance per watt, new architectures change the economics entirely, and nobody's going to want to run inference on 2025 hardware when 2030 chips are twice as efficient at half the cost. The dot-com crash left behind infrastructure with an enduring value because the underlying technology was relatively stable. AI compute is not the same. It's a treadmill where you have to keep buying new hardware and new equipment and putting more power in just to stay competitive. So remember that premium I talked to you about earlier? Good luck getting that premium when your competitors are measurably faster and more efficient because they happen to buy chips later in the game than you did. So here's what I see coming. These companies are locked into a prisoner's dilemma. They need to raise prices to approach profitability, but they can't raise prices without losing market share to their competitors who hold steady. And they can't raise prices too high anyway because self-hosting will become economically attractive. Airlines attack this problem through consolidation and capacity limiting. The industry went through waves of bankruptcies until only a handful of airline carriers remained, and they learned to compete on service rather than price alone. And even then, the margins in the airline industry are pretty terrible. AI companies won't have that option. There is no natural limit to the capacity because you can always spin up more GPUs. Open source models ensure that there's always a cheaper alternative waiting in the wings. And the barriers to entry, they're high in absolute terms, but low relative to the market opportunity. And sure, maybe they'll find a way to eke out an existence, but it's very likely that the early investors in this technology are going to get destroyed. So what comes next? I think that we're heading towards one of three scenarios, and none of them are particularly great for current market leaders or their investors. So scenario one, the companies could achieve breakthrough improvements that dramatically lower their costs. And this is certainly possible. We can't predict technology innovation. But so far, the evidence suggests that the gains are incremental. But maybe, just maybe, with another trillion dollars in investment, it'd just work out. Right, Sam? Scenario two, they could find ways to differentiate beyond model quality. This could mean better integration, enterprise features, things like that. See Southwest Airlines bags fly free. The problem is that there really isn't anything in today's models that competitors can't easily clone. And as I warned startup investors over a year ago, these companies are already integrating third-party features into their platforms after some startup already did the product market fit exercise. And in scenario three, they continue burning cash and suppressing prices in an attempt to be the last model standing while their competitors go out of business. The majority of players never achieve the unit economics they need, values compress, and then consolidation follows. Me personally, I'm betting on scenario three. As I've spoken about before, I do think the technology does have economic value, but the business model has significant problems. The airlines figured this out a long time ago that they were selling a commodity, and I think the AI companies are about to learn the same lesson. Happy coding.